Put any outfit on any subject, but this time with 10 times more accuracy and quality compared to workflow version 4. In this video, we are introducing version 5 of the put on any clothes workflow. Unlike the previous versions that worked with Flux, this one uses the brand new Quen Image Edit Plus 2509 model, an upgraded version of Quen Image Edit with much higher precision. We have got two workflows in this video. Workflow 1, when you give it a prompt, it edits the entire photo, including the subject's face, areas you didn't want changed. Workflow 1 still touches the face slightly altering the look and lowering overall image quality. Workflow 2, this one only edits the areas you tell it to. It changes just those parts, leaving the face and background untouched. This makes a huge difference. The subject's face stays exactly the same, skin details remain intact, and the output photo keeps the same high quality as the original input. In workflow 1, a lot of those details get lost. Now let's jump inside the workflow and I'd explain everything step by step. I really appreciate if you like the video right now and subscribe the channel for my next fantastic tutorials. First, you will need Comfy UI installed. If you haven't done that yet, check out my tutorial video where I go through the complete installation. This one in my channel. After that, download the workflows. Links are in the description. Workflow 1 is totally free and Workflow 2 is exclusive for my WAP and Boosty subscribers. Once you have downloaded the workflow, open Comfy UI, go to Manager and click on Update All to bring your Comfy UI and all custom nodes to the latest version. Then restart the Comfy UI. Finally, just drag and drop the workflow into Comfy UI to start using it. After you download the workflows, you will receive these four files. The first two files are the workflow number one, which I mentioned will edit the entire photo. And the other two files are the workflow number two, which can edit only the part that we select. This is considered a big advantage. To run them, it's enough to just drag and drop the workflow into your comfy UI. This one here is workflow number one. You can see that in these nodes, you need to load your models. All the models you need, I've written here for you. For example, for this node, you must download the main QN Image Edit 2509 model. You can either use the lightweight version or the original full model. For the lightweight versions, which are the GGUF versions, you should use workflow number one GGUF version. But if you download the original QN model, then you must use workflow number one original version. The GGUF version is for computers that are a bit weaker because these are the lighter versions of the QN model. If you want to download the original full model, you absolutely need a powerful GPU, 24GB or 32GB VRAM. Even with a 16GB GPU, you can somehow use the original model, but the process of generating photos will become very slow. For these models, you simply click on this button and start the download. It opens this page and here you see four models. The two at the bottom are not relevant, they are older QN image edit models. What we want is the new QN image edit 2509 model, which is the plus version of QN image edit. You should download one of the top two. If your GPU has 32 GB VRAM or more, you can download the first one. But if you have 24 GB VRAM, you can use the second one, which is the FP8 version. Even on a 32 GB GPU, the first version runs a bit heavy because it is 40 GB in size, which is larger than the VRAM capacity of your GPU. But your computer can also use some of your system RAM in order to load the model. Since I have 32GB VRAM, I downloaded this model and placed it inside my workflow. Also, make sure to set this option to FP8 if you want your generation speed to be higher. But if you want the full quality, the maximum possible quality, you can set this option to default. In that case, it will use the full 40GB. If you set it to the second option, FP8, it will use half the size of the model. Or you can directly download the FP8 version itself and then it doesn't matter which of these two options you select because the model itself is FP8 by default and already compressed. The GGUF version is downloaded from this link. When you go there, you'll see that it has different versions. For example, if you have an 8GB GPU, you can use the Q2 model because its size is less than 8GB, so it won't put too much pressure on your GPU and you can run this model. But the higher you go, the stronger GPU you need. For example, if you have a 16GB GPU, you can use the Q5 version or Q5M, which is a little smaller than Q5L. If you have a 24GB GPU, you can even use the Q8 version. 
This one here is the text encoder and it goes here in this node. You download it from this link. This one is for the VAE and this last option here is the Lightning LoRa, which allows you to use 8 steps instead of 20 steps. When I click on this to download the LoRa, you can see there are a few different versions of it. My suggestion is that you don't go for the 4-step version and instead use the 8-step versions. In this section, you can see that we have different models for 8 steps. If you downloaded the original QN image edit model BF16, then your LoRa should also be BF16. But if you're using the GGUF versions or FP8, then you should use the LoRa versions that don't have BF16 in their name. Here I've explained clearly where each one should be placed. Put each file into its own correct folder. Now here you can easily load each of these models. If the models you downloaded and placed in their folders don't show up in your Conf UI, just press the R key on your key keyboard once and your conf UI will refresh. After refreshing, the models will appear here. After you've downloaded everything, place them into their specific folders and hit R in conf UI. You still need to select each model one by one. Even if you see their names showing up here, you must select them again. The same goes for the next nodes. Here you write your prompt and here you can also use 8 steps instead of 20 steps. Why? Because our LoRa is active here. We also have an option called sampler name. If you click on it, you'll see many different samplers. Personally, I got much better results with Euler A, both the output quality is higher and the colors look much more natural. Of course, you can test the others yourself. This denoise setting here, I set it to 0.97 while usually it's set to 1. The reason for this is so that the output can borrow a little bit of the lighting and color from the reference image, giving us a more natural looking result. In these two sections, you must upload your model image and your clothing image. In the first node, I place the image of my model and in the second node, I can either upload the product photo of the clothing or choose a clothing item that is already on another subject. Here for example I selected an image of a subject wearing a piece of clothing and in my prompt I wrote this woman in image 1 is wearing the dress in image 2. You can also give the AI more instructions by adding more sentences but even this one sentence is enough. We also have a node here called scale image to total pixels. This ensures that your input image is resized to the megapixel value set here. If your input is larger it scales it down close to 1.2 MBP and if it's smaller it scales it up closer to this number. And finally here we can see the output image. As you can see, it gave us a really good result. But one problem we have with workflow 1 is that it edits the entire image. If you look closely, you'll notice that here the whole image has been edited. In the input image, the subject's face is closer, while in the final output, the subject's face looks a bit farther away. And if you pay attention, the overall image quality has dropped a lot. For example, we've completely lost the skin details that we had in the input image, this one here. That quality simply doesn't exist anymore in the output image. Why does this happen? Because when you use QN image edit in workflow 1, even if you specifically tell it in the prompt I only want you to put the dress on the subject. While it does put the dress on very well and it looks like it hasn't touched the other areas, in reality your image has been altered. If you examine carefully you'll notice that sometimes even the face of the person changes in certain outputs. And this is exactly where workflow 2 solves that problem for us. If you take a look here, in workflow 2 we can mask the areas that we want to be edited. I've placed workflow 2 here for you, it has both a GGUF version and the original version. You can just drag and drop it into your Conf UI workflow. Now, as you can see, in the first input image node, I can simply right click and choose open in mask editor. Then I can paint over the areas where I want the edit to happen. Any area I don't paint over will not be touched by the AI at all. And this is the secret to preserving the quality of the input image. We don't allow the AI to degrade the rest of the photo. Here, let me clear the mask once and show you how to paint it again. But before that, one thing to keep in mind, First, look at your clothing image and visualize in your mind which areas need to be masked. For example, if you look at this dress I have here, the upper chest and neckline are uncovered and the clothing only covers from here downward. So when I mask my subject image, I don't need to paint over the upper chest area because the clothing won't cover that part anyway. But if you have a dress like this one here, where even the upper part of the chest is covered, then you need to mask those areas as well so that the clothing will be applied properly. Inside the mask editor, I'll paint over the areas I want changed. I'll also make my mask a little larger than needed so the AI has enough room to work with. Then I just click save, hit run, and that's it. You can see how clean the output is, the parts we didn't want to be edited are completely untouched. And that's just incredible. You can see that the original quality of the photo is fully preserved and the areas that didn't need editing were not changed at all. If the subject hasn't been shifted, they remain exactly in place.
only the areas that needed editing were modified. In workflow 1, you don't have this masking feature, so if you want to make sure your photo's original quality is perfectly preserved and the parts that don't need editing remain completely unchanged, you must use workflow 2. Let me show you a few more examples. Here's another sample. You can see I masked these areas. This is the before image and this is the after image. If I show you the clothing image I used here, you can see that the entire outfit has been placed onto the subject perfectly without altering the original design of the clothing at all. The rest of the photo remains completely untouched. Here's the next example. Look closely at the areas I painted for masking. This is the before and this is the after. You can see that the image quality hasn't changed at all. If you zoom in, you'll notice that every pixel from the input image is preserved. Here is the clothing image I used. You can see how accurately the pants and top were applied onto the subject. It's exactly like the original clothing photo and the quality is simply outstanding. Now, in this example, I wanted to test the workflow to see if instead of just clothing, it would also work on other wearable items like necklaces. I masked the area where the subject would need to wear the necklace around the neck and upper chest. This is the input image and this is the output. You can see how accurately it placed the necklace onto the subject. It preserved all the details of the necklace even though it's a very complex design with multiple elements, something that's usually very difficult for AI to handle. But here, it flawlessly recreated everything without altering the original image. For example, notice this pendant, it has three golden hearts on it in the input image and the workflow perfectly reproduced the same three golden hearts in the output image. This shows the high precision of the workflow. And if you look closely, the quality of the input photo hasn't changed at all. The subject's face, the skin details and and the hair details remain exactly like the input photo. With workflow 1, however, you don't get this same quality and authenticity. Let's run the example using workflow 1. Here I gave it another necklace, and if you look at the output, the entire image has changed. We've lost the skin details compared to the input image. Even though the necklace itself was applied well onto the subject's neck, the skin details were lost, the subject's face has changed slightly, and even the lower parts of the image gained some unwanted artifacts. The face also looks a bit smaller or shifted, as if it's farther from the camera. Here's another test to see if it can also apply sneakers. Look at this subject. This is the original input image and you can see how well it put the sneakers onto the subject's feet. One important note for your prompts, you can use terms like image 1, image 2 or image 3 to guide the AI and make your instructions clearer. This helps it better understand what you mean, although if everything is obvious you don't necessarily need to use these labels, but to prevent any confusion it's often helpful. For example, you can write this woman in image 1 is wearing the necklace from image 2. That way you'll usually get a much more accurate output and find Finally, all these images are available in the download link I've provided. You can download them, prompt public images also include the workflow file. If you drag and drop the image into your workflow, all the prompts and the exact settings I used here will be loaded and visible for you. You can use them as inspiration. Thank you so much for watching the video. That's it for now, goodbye!